thanks for giving us a few extra minutes so that uh, we can uh, improve our abilities. The church is depending upon you helping yeah, me out here. No promises. <laughs> but for those of us, I mean, I think all of us, we all want to, we all aspire to. I mean, maybe not everybody, but I think most people that I met, they want to be funnier. Sure. So what are some of the tips that, where, where can we learn and what tips would you pass along? Yeah, it was funny. I think I was listening to the Pete Holmes podcast last week, and he, or several weeks ago probably, and he was like, uh, you think Jesus opened the Sermon on the Mount with like a joke or like something funny? Like, <laughs> you, think, you think Jesus just got right into it or you think he was like being funny? I think Jesus was probably funny. I think so too. I think he had to be, to have that many followers, you know. But yeah, like you, to say that, like I mean, I think adding humor to any form of communication will make that form of communication better, whether it's an email yeah. or a sermon. Um, and so some of the quick tips that I know that people kind of passed on to me when I was starting trying to be funny on stage was um, talk about yourself. I mean, if you can be um, self-deprecating, that's the easiest way to, pe- for, to make people like you because it, it immediately lets people know, oh, I'm not taking myself too seriously because yeah. that's such a turnoff you know, when somebody is just all about themselves and they're making fun of other people, but they get tight when yeah, they people come poked. back at them. Um, so I, one of the things I like to do on stage is to let the audience know up front, hey, I'm not taking myself too seriously. Um, and there's so many fun ways to do that. Uh, you certainly don't want to go overboard to where the people feel bad for you. It's like, oh, he's you're not that weak. Does he need therapy? Uh, yeah, is he okay? Um, so that's an easy way. I think um, I think speak speak to what you know. I think anytime a comedian um, anytime a comedian is drawing from from their world and they're being true to their voice, that's when they're the funniest. I think. Um, for some more kind of practical, tangible tips, um, when you write it, when we write jokes as comedians, um, the pieces of it are kind of made up of, of a setup, uh, punchline, and then you can put a tag at the end of it. But the setup punchline is kind of really a joke. So setting up, you're telling the audience the information they need to know to understand the punchline, and the punchline is the funny part. So uh, you always want it to be in that order. You want the punchline to hopefully be the, the last word of what you say to be the funniest thing. And I, the example that I kind of tell, and um, when I do my homeschool joke, I say, you know, if I seem uncomfortable up here, it's not because I'm nervous, it's because I was homeschooled. And homeschooled is the funny part, so I put it last. And if you did it the other way, it would be, um, I was homeschooled, that's why I'm so uncomfortable up here. Which, and that might still be funny, but it's not as funny. Right. So you can, if you look at jokes, or if you have a joke or something you say a lot that gets a laugh, look at it, the words and say, okay, maybe if I put the funniest part, the most revealing part of why this is funny at the very end, that gives the audience permission to laugh. People people want to laugh. And if you can, the more you can kind of tell them where they're supposed to laugh, the more they're going to kind of let their guards down enough to be like, all right, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to laugh. So just winging a joke, if you, you, you are learning that over time, but I think for, if we're going to I mean, not that I have to put my set list together for family dinner right, right. or anything. <laughs> well, you might, you know, for the first couple of dinners. <laughs> how, about, uh, how about this? I've seen some people go, oh, this is really funny. Uh huh. And then they get into their joke. Oh, yeah, you don't have to do that. If, <laughs> if you have to tell people something's funny, it's probably not that funny. <laughs> um, but the, I do understand um, when, if you're talking about something serious, you don't want to surprise them too hard with the joke when they're in serious mode. So right. it may be okay to kind of let them know, hey, this next part's not going to be too serious. I think it's the funniest to surprise them out of nowhere. Yeah. Even if it doesn't get as big of a laugh, I enjoy it more if it's done kind of correctly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, you can play around with that, and there's so many great resources for, for joke writing. And it, um, one of the things that I know people say is if you can't think, if you're trying to... Th- one of the hardest things as comedians is to sit down and say, all right, I'm going to write some jokes today. <laughs> you know, what do I want to write? Um, one of the most helpful things for me is um, make a list of things that frustrate you. Okay. If you make a list of things that frustrate you, that is, those are the easiest things to write jokes about. Because the things that frustrate you probably frustrate other people. And if you can think of, to me, the, the best ways of doing that is to find something that frustrates you that you may not realize frustrate you, um, I'm trying to think of an example, but you're, you'll hear a comedian talk about something. They say, yes, I do do that, or like something stupid. Like I think Jeff Fox really has a joke about men. Um, when they take off their underwear, they always do the flick it up with their foot and try to catch it. 
<laughs> and that's something that you would never notice yourself doing. But as soon as he says that, you're like, I do do that. <laughs> like, and that's just him being so observant yeah. of him doing that one day and saying, saying this is weird. Yeah. So, <laughs> I bet other people do this. So pay attention to what frustrates you or pay attention to this is ridiculous or this is really weird. I wonder. Yeah. And write it down. And if you don't it. write it down immediately, you'll forget. Yeah, that's one of the things. I think uh, Mitch Hedberg had a, I don't remember if this was a joke or an interview, but he said, uh, you know, I spend most of my night trying to, fo trying to convince myself something is funny enough to get out of bed and go write it down. Or no, trying to convince myself something's not funny enough. Huh. <laughs> so he'll think of a funny joke and he'll be in bed and she's like, ah, oh, I don't know, he just doesn't want to get up. Oh, well, I have that struggle too. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Where, um, what practical resources, like if somebody wanted to dig in and listen, read, study a little more? Yeah, one of the um, things that helped me the most when I was first starting to do comedy, the, the guy that made me try comedy for the first time recommended this podcast called the School of Laughs Podcast. Okay. Um, it's by Rick Roberts. Um, we've been talking about me being interviewed on that, actually, hopefully soon. Um, but he does a great job, especially in the early on um, stages of the podcast. He would each episode would be a lesson. It would be like, "Hey, here's um, how to put yourself into a story. Here's how to put yourself into a joke to make it funnier. And here's how to put the punchline at the end. And here's a how to use misdirection. Here's how to do a call." So it's so it's such practical stuff that if if you just started doing comedy, it might take you three years to learn all that stuff. But if you just listen to the podcast, you're just getting it. You're getting it fast. So that's been one of for me one of the biggest things that helps me start to do well uh, probably sooner than I would have without it. Huh. How long does it take you to build a joke? Oh man, I have so many jokes I've been doing for such a long time that I still feel like aren't finished. You can get a joke to work before it's finished, I think. Huh. Um, and as a comedian, you have the luxury of telling the same joke over and over and over. And some pastors might do that, but it's <laughs> not recommended because you have the same, you, you have the uh, disadvantage of being in front of the same audience every time. Or, you know, give or take, the same core audience. Yeah. For me, I go to the comedy club and I get to assume that it's fresh, new crowd every time. Um, so I'm constantly working on jokes and I'm always have my phone on the stool recording the audio so I can go back and listen and say, okay, well, that part didn't work, but that part did, so let's get rid of that part and build the joke around this part and let's try a few different tags tonight and, okay, that one worked out, didn't work, we'll keep that one, we'll think of some more. So it's a lot of hearing how the joke works and then whittling it down and hopefully get it to a place where you're happy with it. Yeah. Um, yeah um, by the time you're happy with it, you're tired of it. Yeah, that's right. You're ready to move on. Uh, so I, I got two more questions. Talk, you talk about the setup and the punchline. Mm -hmm. The tag is uh, not a tag as in like Instagram or like a hashtag. No. It's really yeah. a... <laughs> yeah, so I think um, you know any joke has a set, set up and a punchline. And then a tag would be anything you say that's funny, that kind of builds on the punchline. So the joke kind of works, set up punchline, but as comedians, we want to squeeze every bit of funny as we can out of every joke and every punchline, so. First day of high school, you tell uh... Oh yeah, 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 so yeah, that's, I have some tags on that. So I would say, um, I talk about going to public high school after being homeschooled, so I'll say, you know, I, um, parents homeschooled me for 10 years, then I'm public high school. It's a hard transition. I, uh, I learned all the bad words on the first day um, in the same conversation with the lunch lady. So you just kind of keep going <laughs> until the laugh stop, and then yeah. you figure out which of those work and which ones don't work. Um, and then you also have the in the same spirit of kind of squeezing as much as you can out of a out of a punchline. You want to squeeze as much as you can out of the whole premise. So if I have a joke. Um, that works one way about mission trips or whatever. Um, all right, I don't need to say, okay, done with my, that's all my mission trip material. I'll just do this one joke. You say, okay, what other, what else is funny about mission trips? Because I can turn this one minute joke into a six minute joke. Yeah. If I, cause there's so much, there's so much rich things to talk about in that huge topic. So don't, don't get one part of the topic and then say, I'm done and say, okay, well, how, how much can I take this further? Cause as comedians and communicators, we're always trying to, to build material and to stretch things out and not make them longer and boring. But if you can keep adding punchlines and make things take longer, then that's how you uh, build your act the fastest. So who are some comedians that you would recommend or that you're yeah. kind of uh, hanging out with that would uh, be relatively safe for our audience? Sure, I wish I was hanging out with the, my favorite comedians all the time. Um, the guys that I listen to a lot 
who aren't 100% clean, but they're not going to be the ones that, that make you wonder if you're still a Christian afterwards. <laughs> uh, I, love, I love John Mulaney. Okay. Um, he's, to me, maybe the funniest comedian alive right now. Um, there's so many great comedians around Atlanta now that I'm so excited to see um, be famous one day that are great. Mandel was one of my really good friends. Um, guys like Wellington Juku, um, Nathan Owens, some great people. Um, but other people I recommend for uh, your audience. Uh, Jeff Foxworthy's always been one of my favorites, and Brian Regan. Those, those are the guys that I listened to the most when I was like a kid. Yep. Um, so those were my first real exposures to stand-up, so I'll always love them. Thanks again for spending so much time with us, sharing your story, helping us laugh. If, if uh, we want to follow you, and yeah. you know, where, do we, where do we go? Yeah, um, social media, I'm the most active on Instagram. Would love to stay friends with you guys on there. It's uh, at Andrew W. Stanley. Um, and then my website is andrewstanleycomedy.com, which is great. I do obviously stuff like this that we did today, and then I'll do company Christmas parties and comedy clubs, and anyone that wants me to tell jokes, I would love to, to do it. So that's the easiest way to get in touch with me. And if we want help with our accounting? You can have to. I have. I can give you some recommendations. <laughs> I know a lot of people in that world. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for spending time with us. Thanks so much. This has been fun.